Good evening and welcome to Tinkering with Edkelar. For this episode I have a rather special treat for you. A friend in Germany found an interesting piece of photography equipment in the junk bin. Turns out to be a quite rare large format lens, a Schneider Kreuznach Super Angulon 210mm 1 over 8. It was thrown into the dumpster rather unceremoniously. Judging by the heavy bend in the mounting plate and the wobbly lens itself. Let's look at the basic construction of a large format lens for reference. Since there was no standard lens mount back then, every manufacturer provided lens plates that usually came pre-drilled and you could just screw in the lens of your choice. The lens itself comes in two pieces, the front object facing and the back film facing part. The light is collected and takes a path through the lens where all the light rays converge in the center part between the two halves. Note that not all lenses are symmetrical, sometimes the back part is smaller than the front Making the glass parts is a complicated science or dark magic. Now, right in the center point we have the shutter. Those also came in a few standard models. Copal 1, 2 or 3 seemed to be popular models. The shutter is arranged in a ring and contains all the mechanical parts of the lens. The aperture, timing and the actual shutter blades. All the features of the shutter mechanic have to fit into a very small donut shaped form factor and are extremely delicate. Note that the shutter can open and close within 1 400th of a second. So let's have a peek. Pretty much all of the buttons and dials of the shutter are stuck. This does not bode well. Unscrewing the lens part from the shutter. Well, at least the first part. The dial for the speed setting now slides off. Ew! The shutter blades look pretty nasty. Brr. But at least it's clear why the lens was wobbling. The cage that is holding it around the shutter has a few busted screws. Well, that looks pretty much oxidized. I'm pretty sure that there shouldn't be so much sand-like stuff coming out of it. The metal ring on the inside is transferring the timing setting down to the actual shutter selection disc. This lens has a pretty normal shutter, but it is buried within that barrel thingy, so they had to forward the setting to the outside. Okay, let's get into the shutter next. The front plate is held in place with a tiny rotary clasp. Turning it 180 degrees releases the plate and allows it to be rotated and removed. Lots of grinding noises, but at least it moves. That is rust inside. Not a good sign at all. Hmm, a few parts are still moving, but overall it's completely and utterly stuck. I am carefully poking all the springs to see if any will fly out when I remove the timing selection disc. 
you can see the cams on both sides that control the timing and shutter control functions based on the rotation angle. Lots of rust! And I am pretty sure that most of these levers should at least move somewhat. Well, the shutter blades also look like they had seen better times. I think it's safe to assume that a few pokes will not cause any more damage. Sheesh, they seem to be rusted in place. After a bit of scraping and removing some of the nastier stuff, I start to remove more parts. This section is the trigger mechanism. Since the lens has a B and T setting, as well as the normal timed options, it is a bit complicated. Without the trigger, I can remove the main drive spring, which is my main worry at the moment. This allows the driver ring to come out without poking my eyes out. That little lever that is stuck in the bottom part is actually the clutch part of the self-timer clockwork. to remove the self timer next, but the screw that also held the mainspring is stubborn and I don't have a proper driver for that weird design. The main timing clockwork was my next attempt. At least one of the screws was completely fused. I finally managed to unhook the clutch part from the self-timer and the drive ring came out. Now I can see deeper into the abyss. The open shutter button is starting to move at least a little bit. Back to the trigger part. The larger levers lock the drive ring in the tensioned position. The green lever is the XM toggle switch that controls the timing for the flash contact. See my Kodak Flash Mod video for detailed explanation on that. Another tiny part removed. This one controls the actual shutter, converting the almost linear movement of the linkage into a fast turning motion to open and close the blades. The next part in the disassembly is the manual shutter button. To set up the camera and adjust the focus, you need to look through the lens. So these shutters have a lock the shutter open button. Since I'm lacking a proper driver for these weird split heads, 
I had to apply quite a bit of excessive force to get them off. I didn't want to sacrifice a screwdriver for a lost cause. Finally, the timing assembly came loose and it is quite clear why it wasn't moving. Some of the gears were rusted together. Up next the trigger and flash control part, with the next weird screw, but since this one wasn't seized, I could improvise without much damage. That big spring is a support for the 1 400th exposure timing to help the shutter go really fast. And here we have the only gears that move at least somewhat. This thing interacts with the trigger and the flash, so I assume it's the X delay. The main spring screw was the worst of them. I had to use brute force. Eventually it was mangled enough so I could grab it with a pair of pliers. <laughs> And the self-timer has even worse rust clumps in it than the timing train. All the gears are seized. Now, all the other screws are on the bottom end. But the bottom or film side of the lens is stuck and it won't turn. Well, give me a lever long enough and I make every photographer cringe. And now I also can remove the mounting plate. Hmm, the next problem. The shutter is mounted in that barrel with the lens ring. I do have a proper tool for that, but it is stuck so badly that I'm essentially shaving off the ring instead of turning it. I am beyond caring too much now. Let's drill that sucker out. A few scratches later, the shutter finally comes out of the mounting contraption. Oh, a ball and spring detent for the aperture.
finally, access to the bottom screws. The aperture ring is held in place from the inside and I could only reach one of those screws, but at least the main carrier should now come out. God, no wonder this is stuck. And here's the aperture every one of the 10 blades. I carefully peeled them out. If any of these are broken, I don't see a chance of repairing it. shutter is not much better, worse even. Some of the blades were so stuck that I had to use some oil to get them off. Pretty sure that there are no spare parts around for these anymore. Finally, the innermost part, the ring that actually moves the shutter blades, also stuck. Brrr. Okay, I think that's enough for this episode. Tune in for the next part when I decide what grid sandpaper makes the best lens cleaning tool. I never thought I'd say that. Oh, what aperture are you using? 200 grit. Huh?